Continuing back with more digital trends live, artificial intelligence is something we love talking about here, and increasingly, it is such a part of technology, no matter what facet you're in. And we have an expert on artificial intelligence from Kindy. We're now joined by Ryan Welsh. Hello, Ryan. I don't think I can quite hear you. Okay, and we are joined now by Ryan Welsh. Ryan, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. There we go. See, we need the AI to fix this for us. Um, let's That's talk. <laughs> so, Ryan, thanks for hopping on here today. And I want to talk about a lot of the things, you know, that your company is doing. So let's first go to this. Why don't we talk about what Kindy is and then maybe get into talking about the first explainable AI or whatever order you want to do with that. Yeah, sure. So first, first the, the, the company. So we're an AI startup based in San Mateo, and we build explainable AI products for government, financial services, and healthcare. And we exist because those industries can't use purely machine learning, uh, statistical machine learning techniques, because those techniques are generally black boxes. So effectively, how do you build systems that can get past regular regulatory requirements and also uh, just gain trust of, of users in those industries? Okay, so it's just kind of to help everybody out there, you know, in, in getting to understand this. And that's the thing. I think for AI, for a lot of people, it's such a broad concept that it is, it is a difficult thing, you know, to, to really wrap your mind around what it is and where it's going. Um, how, did, uh, how did this company come to be? Like, how did you get this started? Yeah, I, I got to start. I was, I was, I was working in uh, so I have a graduate degree in, in quantitative finance. I was working for a law firm during a financial crisis. And effectively, we had to read a bunch of information to help our clients get uh, uh, unwind a bunch of esoteric credit derivatives. And in three days, I had to read an amount of information that when I left for business school, three years later, I was still reading. So uh, effectively, how do you build machines that help us consume that information and ultimately make decisions faster uh, instead of taking three years, maybe take the actual three days. So um, when you work with these systems, they don't really work well on, on language, and they can't explain to you why they're, why they're making recommendations, why they're bringing back certain search results. So kind of bringing all that together, um, which is why I started Kindy in June 2014, um, and why we've been going gangbusters ever since, because the kind of hypothesis of you need explainable systems, you need it to work on natural language, um, you know, we've, we've been able to bring that to market. Uh, that's that's actually a really great concept, and that is something that I think is going to be necessary going forward. You know, the more complicated this gets, if we can't understand it, that there's something. I think there's some kind of a maybe a human element in there where it's like we want it to. We want the AI to explain it to us in our language. You know, not just yeah. Here's what's so, here's, yeah. Here's what's so interesting is the fact that you have me on and are asking the question why is exactly why we need it. Yeah. <laughs> right. It, it, it's I, you know, I've been I've been doing a, a talk recently where I get up on stage and I say that uh, for AI to thrive, it needs to be explainable. And then I walk off stage. And everyone's <laughs> like, wait a minute, he has, he has 30 minutes. And I joke that if I was a neural network, I would just walk off stage. And and there's something about being, you know, what makes us human is this uh, ability to ask why and this desire to ask why. And every time someone makes a statement, your first reply is why. And it's because we want to interrogate um, and understand the, pe the person's belief system and their, their logic so that we can ultimately determine whether we believe them, whether we adhere to, to their, their principles, and ultimately we can, we can gain trust with that individual. And if we don't have machines that can provide that, then it just really won't be able to fit within our you know, workflow as human beings. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to take things at face value. You want to know exactly yeah, how that happened. That's, that's a good point. I mean, I didn't even think about it that way, but just human nature, like, okay, cool. You told me this. How, how did you find this out? You know, how did you determine this? Yeah. What was your process? Well, what are, um, I know some of the things that we wanted to talk about here too, because you had brought this up is what are the top two issues for enterprises specific to AI? Yeah, the, 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 the top two, well, number one is explainability. There was a great yeah. article um, recently where IBM did a survey of 5,000 businesses and 82% of them wanted to adopt AI, but the number one hurdle was explainability. The executives and business unit owners in those companies didn't feel that AI was sufficiently transparent for them to, for it to fit within their, their workflows. And then the other one is, is that modern techniques are overly reliant on a lot of labeled data. Um, so I think one of the biggest challenges is, you know, when any AI startup or even an a, a incumbent company goes into work with an enterprise, the first question they have is, you know, where's all your data? 
Is it clean? Is it labeled? Um, is there 50,000 or in some cases 500,000 or a million examples that I can learn from? And the answer to that question is typically no. So that's why you see a lot of the da data labeling companies doing a lot of, of work now um, labeling that data. So they're the two biggest biggest hurdles is because with that label um, aspect of it, it just takes so long to deploy these systems that, you know, two years in, you're not getting any value yet because you haven't even labeled or trained the, the system yet. That's, uh, yeah, that's got to be a, a very big industry right now is going through and relabeling all that data. You figure years and years and years of collecting that with no actual way to have that be available as, as an asset for, for artificial intelligence to even learn off of it. I also feel like a lot of companies are incorporating the name AI into things, but you know, back to that, they don't really know what AI is. You know, it's just like, oh yeah, oh, we got AI in that thing. You know, but what is AI? Yeah, yeah, there's, 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 uh, and there's both two sides to that too, because uh, uh, CEOs will tell their executives, go buy me AI. <laughs> yeah, <right? And> <laughs> I need to get some of that. Executives come in and be like, do you have it? Because I want to buy it. And uh, <laughs> of course, you know, people are going to say, of course, I, I, I have it for you. So, I mean, I, I think, I think any, I think AI has, has its ability for machines to learn, um, but also to reason. And I think people a lot uh, forget that next step. Um, because this current wave of AI that we're seeing, these statistical machine learning techniques are phenomenal at learning from data, but they don't reason very well. And I'm talking about reasoning in the historic symbolic AI sense of inductive, deductive, abductive, analogical reasoning, these kind of things that we can do as human beings. So I think of AI as, as this, this ability to, to learn from data, but then to also reason with that data or reason with the knowledge that you acquire from that data and put that knowledge together in new and novel ways and create ultimately new knowledge. How far away do you think we are from, from that exact kind of system? Uh, we're, we're very far away from artificial general intelligence. Uh, you know, I, there was an uh, article where, where I think it was Kurzweil was saying 2029, and then uh, mm -hmm. uh, Brooks uh, was saying 2200. 20, uh, I, I put it out there, there pretty far. I mean, if you're in the industry and you work with AI systems, um, you understand how limited they are, specifically around um, sensory motor um, and natural language understanding or comprehension of, of language. Um, systems are very good at parsing sentences, but not really good at understanding the semantics and the pragmatics of, of language. That's a, that's an interesting perspective, especially coming from somebody you know in the industry. Because I I feel like a lot of people are worried. You know, we're going to reach singularity, and the AI is going to take us over in a few years. But you're, you're saying that's not going to happen for a while. Yeah, no, not not at all. And and I, I think this is this is where the industry gets gets in in trouble is because I think the breakthroughs that we have have been phenomenal. Yet uh, compared to the hype that we're throwing behind it, they it's just it's just not there. So we're like. The, the hype is exceeding the actual applications of, of these these technologies. And that kind of mismatch, I think, will ultimately send uh, certain techniques um, into a, a AI winter. Um, and I think that the people that are going to prevail are going to be the, the companies that realize that AI is a feature of a product, not the product itself. So you got to go in, you got to solve real business problems or uh, people problems and ultimately have AI be a feature of the product, not the product itself. Very good point. Well, Ryan, I want to thank you, you know, for, having a, uh, for hopping on the show here today with us. And where can people follow Kindy and, and follow everything that you do as a company? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kindy.com is a, a great place to check in on our uh, AI research, uh, white papers that we have out, uh, Kindy Tech uh, Twitter, uh, and of course on, on LinkedIn as well. Um, so that's, that's everything. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. Ryan Wells joining us right here on Digital Trends Live. Have a great day.